How's it going everybody? Today, we will be building a pair of plant stands. Let's get started. For the legs, we're using 5 quarter inch maple that needs to be cut to rough size. For the top, we're using 5 quarter inch African mahogany. As you can see here, the mahogany is a little over 12 inches and that is too wide for my jointer for the milling process. So first we will take it to the bandsaw to remove a little bit of the excess width and then we can take it to the jointer to flatten one face. While we're here, we can also mill the rest of our lumber. With the milling process complete, we can now pre-sand all of the pieces before moving into dimensioning and joinery. Starting with the mahogany, we want to be able to extract two circular tops out of this piece. With the layouts complete, we can then drill a small hole at each of the two centers that will serve as the underside of the plant stand. Using our circle cutting jig from last week's video, we can pin the pivot point with the drill bit, plunge the router, and take a few passes. Because I don't find it safe to route all the way through the material, I stopped at about 3 eighths of the way in. At the bandsaw, I separated the two tops and rough cut the circle, being careful not to cut into the innermost parts. We can then use a flush trim router bit to clean up the rest of the circle. With the circular top completed, we can now turn our attention to the maple legs and rip the pieces to our desired width. Then we can clamp all of the pieces against a miter gauge and trim one end to be square. We can then flip over the pieces making sure all of the freshly cut edges align well and then trim the second end to our desired length of 23 inches. With the legs dimensioned, we can do a pseudo assembly to see how the finished pieces would look. Of course, we want to do some type of joinery that allows us to fixate the legs onto the top. I want to accomplish this by making a dado channel on both the legs and the circular top such that they interlock with each other, creating a very strong joint. In order for this to be successful, we will need to know exactly the thickness of both the legs and the top as this will dictate how wide our dado channels needs to be. Starting with the legs, we want to create a channel few thousandths of an inch less wide than the thickness of the circular top. We can make the first cut using a block against the fence as a reference. We do this instead of using the fence as that will have a potential to pinch the blade and cause a kickback event. Then we continue to repeat the same cuts on all of our legs. We can then take a conservative second cut that will determine the width of our dado. 
Using a caliper, we can gauge our progress and gently sneak up on the cut until we are almost exactly at the thickness of the circular top. Once we have the second cut position determined, we can repeat the same cut on all of our legs. Next, we can clear the material between the two cuts by making a series of passes. Doing a test fit, we can verify that the top will fit snug into the dado. Now we can turn our joinery attention to the top. Using a center finding gauge, we can mark the center and draw three lines that are 120 degrees from each other because we're making a three-legged plant stand. I chose to go with three legs instead of four because a tri-legged design will always be coplanar and mitigate rocking issues on uneven floors. This is the reason why tripods are always built with three legs. Then, using a cutoff piece from the legs, we can mark a rough outline of the dado. Using a chisel, we can cut into the inner part of the scribed line as this will ensure we have a snug fit. At the bandsaw, we can carefully remove majority of the material and then fine tune using a chisel. Finally, we can do a dry fit to make sure all of the joinery will fit nice and snug and without issues. Next, I want to add a taper to the legs because, well, straight and square legs are boring. Unfortunately, I don't have a taper jig and the legs are too long to fit into my crosscut sled. So I decided to take off one of the non-reference fence on my crosscut sled to make a quick tapering jig. Using scrap pieces of wood and double-sided tape, we can create stop positions for the legs that will allow us to repeatedly cut tapers on all of our legs. Using a hand plane, we can quickly clean up some of the marks left behind by the saw blade. Clamping a piece like this can be tricky. Instead, I want to drive a long screw through the legs that can act as clamps. We can hide the screws by making matching plugs with a cutoff piece of the same maple. With all of the joinery completed, we can now begin the gluing process.
For finishing, we're using nitrocellulose lacquer for its durability. Once dried, we are now done with today's build. Well, that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, please click the like button below and consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you on the next one.